Hey guys, and welcome back to the series where I react to, review, fix your setups. Now before we begin, since my last upload we actually hit 200,000 subscribers, which is absolutely unbelievable. Like, I just want to say a massive thank you for your support. I'm just a regular person who loves to talk about reptiles. I could have never even imagined like getting 2,000 subscribers, let alone 200,000. So I just want to say thank you so, so much. But without further ado, let's get on to what you came here for, the setups. So the first one comes from Josh and he has two geckos with the best names ever, Hugh Geckoman and Sir Gregor the Mountain. Amazing. Basically one has a 20 gal tank and one has a 40 gal. I'm not sure if these hides are super big but at first I must admit I did think it was a 10 gal tank. I would love to know like what the measurements are like the centimeters or inches of the floor space because I'm wondering if it's 20 gal but it's tall rather than being like long because ideally if you're going for a 20 gal tank you want a big footprint. Now one thing I did notice and I feel I should point out is um, I still see this quite a lot anyway but it's a red light. Red lights aren't really great. They're sold as being infrared lights but true infrared produces no visible light um, and since Josh is already using a heat mat I don't really think the red light is needed. Overall though I think you've got some good things going on here. I do prefer the bigger tank so I'd say if you can upgrade the other tank as um, as you said in your email Hugh's water and food dish does need fixing and you're only using an analog gauge for his tank so I would say get rid of the red light. You can always replace it with a ceramic heat emitter if you still want the heat. Get digital thermometers and hygrometers and obviously fix the water and food dish. Next we have Marlene. She wants to know if her tank is adequate and why her gecko doesn't leave the warm height. Now the first thing I have to say I notice is, is that an egg? That looks like an egg to me. I don't know. You have to let me know what that actually is. Um, anyway, I think one issue with glass tanks is the geckos can feel quite exposed. I do wonder if you had like a background or even something around the sides as well, whether your gecko would feel more secure and come out more. If your gecko is new or a baby, it may stay in the warm hide a lot more and only move to the cold hide at night. Also... As always, make sure your thermostat is controlling the temperature and the thermometer is reading the temperature. Um, I can't really see them here, but they may be in the hide. But um, basically, sometimes a lack of activity could just be down to inadequate temperatures. So make sure you're on top of all of that. Next, we have a crested gecko setup from Lottie. Her first concern was that some people have said her tank may be too big for her baby gecko. Now, that is a tiny baby gecko. It's so cute. Um, but with, I think the concern is in captivity, if the tank is too big, uh, the gecko may not find adequate heat or food. And basically in the wild, like there would be the perfect condition. So that is an issue. But say you had a really long, massive tank and a baby at one end and the heat is at the other, you know, it might not be ideal. However, from your email, it seems that your gecko is finding food, is doing well, and you've got lots of stuff in this tank. It looks really nice and good. So um, if you feel your gecko is doing fine in here, growing and doing well, then I don't think that's such an issue. Now, she's also worried that because her crested gecko spends a lot of time in this coconut hide, it's directly under the UV lamp and she's worried it's getting overexposed. Now I do agree with your concern, I would probably move the UV across the tank a little just so it ends up being a bit further away, it has to travel a little bit further so it's not as strong. In my Chihua tank I do have a UV light but it's over an area of varying heights of wood and cork so Drogo can actually choose to move closer or further away from it if he wishes. But overall I think your gecko is absolutely adorable and your tank looks brilliant. Then we have another leopard gecko set up from Jose. He just wanted to ask whether the ceramic heat emitter and quill UV bulb is a good combination. So I think the heater is fine. Just make sure your gecko can't touch it. You can always put a cage around it to protect it. Um, as for the quill bulb, I must admit quill bulbs don't have the best reputation. 
they definitely aren't really a great option I would always recommend a tube UV light they are far better I know in your email you did say they are quite expensive where you are which is a shame because I know with UV lights you do usually have to replace them yearly some aren't as good and you need to replace them every few months but um ideally if you can I would recommend a tube light the next setup is from Hayden and they wanted to know if their crystal gecko tank is big enough. It's 12 by 12 by 18 inches and also they mentioned about using a humidifier in the tank. Now I hope the humidifier doesn't replace spraying down the tank. Um, it's good to spray down the tank so they can actually drink the water off the walls and the leaves. Like I had a fogger and I would put that on sometimes, it's great for releasing ultra fine cool mist in the air, but it's kind of like replacing rainfall with a bit of fog, you know, like it, it, it doesn't compete. So make sure you haven't completely replaced spraying down the tank with this sort of fogger, make sure you are still spraying down the tank. Now I'm not 100% sure how old your gecko is but if it's getting to about 6 months or older it's looking like a decent size, I would say upgrade to an 18 by 18 by 24. Then we have a bioactive tank from Kiki and her, their gecko Sage. I have to say this actually looks amazing. I do love getting inspiration from you guys. Um, I wouldn't really change anything but I did see that you have heat mats on the side as well as a deep heat projector. I'm not 100% sure if they're really needed. You'll have to let me know like is there a purpose? Why do you use these? Uh, let me know below but I have seen some, I saw like a leopard gecko tank build by the bio dude and he put a heat mat on the side of the tank and that doesn't really make sense for a leopard gecko so I wouldn't recommend that in general. But let's finish on two follow-ups. So if your tank has been featured in a previous video and you have upgraded it based on my feedback and you want it featured in a video, I may actually do this as a whole video. Um, put in a subject like updated tank in capital letters so it stands out. Tell me who you are, tell me like maybe what episode you're in and um, maybe we'll do a video where I show everyone's upgrades. But basically back in December, I think it was the 8th tank review, we had setups from Scarlet and Magma Cube and both have sent me in their updates. So Scarlet has since added in some Lucky Bamboo, Apophos and new branches and apparently Nutmeg, her gecko, is loving it. And Magma Cube has upgraded their tank to a 20 gal long, their gecko has an extra hide there's a humid hide which apparently they had before they just pop it in when the gecko is about to shed which is fair enough but I'm just so glad to see these upgrades to see these videos are actually helping now I do still have other setups to go through still quite a few emails um, but maybe after I make the next tank review I will put up another post on Instagram when I am looking for setups no doubt there will be someone in the comment section asking how to submit the setup nobody waits to the end when I explain um, but make sure you are following me over on Instagram at Leopard Gecko YouTube. I also have a second page called Splutsagram where I post both my own photos and your photos of your reptiles splooting. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.